your home for principles, not politics. It's the Seth Liebson Show. Now, here's Seth. Welcome back. Thursday, October 15th, 2015. From one doctor to another doctor guest, Dr. Zudi Jasser. He is the president and founder of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy and, among other things, the author of The Battle for the Soul of Islam, an American Muslim Patriot's Fight to Save His Faith. Dr. Jasser, welcome back. Oh, it's great to be with you, Seth. Thanks for having me on. One of these days, I'm going to have you on with some, so we, we can talk about some good news. It seems like oh, I whenever know. I have you on, it's bad news. Tell us about the latest. There's a conference coming up. Uh, you guys will represent there, but the conference itself looks like it's got a lot of problems. Yeah, you know what's fascinating about this is this is you know it's just amazing that this is taking place on American soil from a good sense, and that the Parliament of World Religions is like the global olympics of interfaith it's been uh, it's almost 100 years in evolution since the 19th century and last time it was in the united states was 1993 and it's in salt lake 10,000 people come and uh, it's basically uh, includes the dalai lama and uh, most of the uh, uh, known leaders of uh, almost every if not every faith on the planet and uh, you know, with the Pope just visiting a few weeks ago, uh, it really comes in a time when the world is just being struck with a lot of uh, religious-based violence. They have today they opened uh, with a session all day on women's rights and uh, the abuse of women and other issues, which, you know, it's a very lofty organization uh, that I would encourage people to take a look at. Now, unfortunately, uh, my chronic complaint about them is they deal a little too much with politics like climate change, and you and I talked about that, about the Pope. And other things, but the the bigger issue for this one is I looked at it, and uh, we have somebody going to it because uh, it's up in Salt Lake, and uh, we've been very engaged in interfaith work. Actually, a lot of the support for our Islamic reform work comes from interfaith work here locally in Arizona at the Arizona Interfaith Movement. Uh, but I look, and one of the major sponsors is not only Claremont University, which is a a local uh, national leader in interfaith work, but King Abdullah. Center on Interfaith Dialogue, which uh, has opened multiple centers around the world since being formed in 2011, and uh, it's one of the only two major sponsors. And then they announced three days ago, surprise, surprise, the keynote speaker is Sheikh Mohammed uh, Ibn Humaid. And uh, for people who don't know who he is, he's currently the Mufti of the Grand Mosque in Saudi Arabia, but for many years he was the head of their juristic council. So when you look at the draconian laws that are enforced where you and I have talked months ago about Rafe Bedoui who's being flogged in front of the largest mosque in Jeddah for speaking ill supposedly of Islam and yet advocating ideas like ours. Uh, that comes from his counsel. So here you have a conference of lofty goals of religious freedom and women's rights whose keynote address is coming from a sheikh of a 13th century variety of a country that's a, a, a religious prison. And the head of the parliament from Chicago is a guy by the name of Abdul Malik Mujahid. And we have in our release on our website at AIF Democracy a description of his work, but he runs a company called Sound Vision, which is the United States' largest disseminator or clearinghouse of Wahhabi ideology. And he's running this conference. So you know, for the folks in the parliament, if you look at their declarations of what they supposedly stand for, it looks great. Principles most Americans and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights stand with. And yet, they're being run by a guy who put out, this Abdul Malik put out a, 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 pre, a apologetic in 2010 about jihad that ISIS would be proud of. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. You know, one of the things, and I'm glad you're uh, you're bringing attention to this, Dr. Jasser, because one of the things that's happened over the past, I don't know, year and a half, two years, as um, this administration has been continuing to appease Iran, is a lot of people have been talking about, well, how uncomfortable it has made or was making Saudi Arabia, and it almost sounded like we were starting to paper over some of our serious problems and differences with Saudi Arabia, one of the most uneasy allies we have. And it seems to me when you're highlighting something like this, it's a really good reminder that, um, well, maybe some of the leadership has changed over the past decade or two decades there, 
Uh, the country is still maybe the largest generator of uh, Wahhabi uh, Islamism in the world. It really is, and it is a boot camp for ISIS and the radicals. They claim to be on our side against ISIS, and yet uh, their ideology is, is breeding this. They've beheaded more people in Saudi Arabia at the hands and the recommendation of this guy who's, who's keynoting this conference uh, um, more than ISIS has beheaded people, but they do it not with videos and on YouTube. Right. They do it privately, uh, and some of the flogging is done publicly in order to make an example of people. But you know, it's interesting. I tweeted out our press release and I I tagged the uh, uh, conference head, and he responded. He said, "Well, the, uh, we have a pagan who's the vice chair of the conference. We have Ambassador Saperstein who's a Jew, and others. So this is an inclusive conference, and I'm being intolerant." And I said. You're taking blood money from the worst regime in the planet as far as Islam, and I, as a Muslim, am, am offended that you think they should be included as part of inclusivity. So to those who think that America's problem with the Saudis is a diplomatic one because the president has to sort of deal with bad actors or we'd be at war, this is not about diplomacy. This is about political correctness and blindness of the far left and others who basically turn a blind eye because tens of millions of dollars come to fund this conference, and they just ignore the fact that it becomes a laundering operation for the Saudi government. Dr. Jasser, you talked about uh, American problems with Saudi Arabia and other places. What uh, There's also, in the highlight of that text or email you got back, America's problem with America. The idea, this this is pre-9-11 thinking, which is where we are again. Uh, Post-9-11 thinking has become pre-9-11 thinking, unfortunately, with the confusion of moral categories. Uh, this is just so very standard and typical. It could have come from any head of any, any social science department almost in America. Uh, well, you have to be inclusive and diverse, don't you know? We have a Jew and agnostic and someone who beheads people. It is just unbelievable that somehow they think that if they're going to invite representatives of Islam, then the bigotry of low expectations yeah. demands that Muslims must therefore be represented by Neanderthals who treat women as slaves. But, oh, never mind, they're with us, and this is the way Islam is, and we don't want to offend them. They're, they're spending millions, if not hundreds of millions, on interfaith centers. Uh, they invited John Esposito, the head of the the uh, uh, um, Saudi Center on Christian Muslim Understanding at Georgetown. He's speaking, too, and, and the, the conference is teeming with Islamists, and, you know, Americans left to their own devices on our soil. This isn't a conference parliament as they've been in Turkey and elsewhere over the past 20 years. This is now on our soil, mm -hmm. and yet the same paradigm of inviting the worst actors of the Muslim world to represent our faith community. All the while, you have many Arizona Muslim leaders going up there and others that really just turn a blind eye to it as if somehow we want these people as our leaders, and they're just lacking the courage and the moral clarity to stand against them. For people who used to think right after 9-11 that this is a problem in big cities or New York or the L.A. Tower or Chicago, I mean, what we've learned— we, we we say this is a worldwide, it's a global war. What we are now painfully learning is the war has many facets to it. Uh, some of it is through violence, some of it is through ideology and propaganda. But, you know, it's alive, it's as alive and well in New Jersey as it is in Garland, Texas, or my goodness gracious, as you're pointing out, Utah. And, you know, in Utah now, just as the Olympics were in Salt Lake, yeah. This is the Olympics of interfaith. You have 10,000 people coming from all over the planet. I sent the press release to some of my uh, friends who are in the uh, state uh, legislature up in Utah and saying, you know, this is happening in your backyard. 90% uh, of the people there are, are wonderful, really uh, don't realize who's paying for their lunch and their dinner while they're there. Sure. But at the end of the day, they are giving the Saudis and the people who are writing the checks for this event – a, a mechanism to conceal the evil that's happening inside Saudi and inside many mosques that they fund. The Saudis took no Syrian refugees. They instead said the way they're going to solve the European refugee crisis is to build 200 mosques in Germany. That's their solution of spreading their radical ideology to help humanitarian causes, and it's just absurd. Uh, Dr. Jasser, um, 
Before I let you go and move on to um, treating patients individually rather than fixing our body politic, of which you do both so well, um, a thought or two, if you might, on um, on what you heard, if you heard or at least read about from from the debate the other night. From what I heard on the Democratic Party, I heard a defense, uh, for the most part, from our former Secretary of State of, of what we did and how we engaged Libya. I heard a defense of how things have been going in Syria. I heard a defense of the deal with Iran. Um, do they really believe this? Uh, it's hard for me to listen to that debate and think I live in the same country. Uh, Seth, I have to tell you, I was almost physically ill after watching this debate. Yeah. Um, first of all, it took 20 minutes before we got off the subject of socialism and yeah, guns. Right. And then and then the whole debate, the word Islam, Islamism, jihad, even the word terrorism wasn't brought up. Right. When they mentioned the Middle East, uh, I don't know if it was Chafee or Webb said uh, uh, chaos was the number one. Chaos in the Middle East is the problem, as if yeah. somehow they're talking about multiple car accidents. Right. And, you know, so... There was no vision. Uh, uh, Secretary Clinton's explanation of, you know, trying not to offend her old boss yeah. while saying that she would somehow endorse a no-fly zone, but yet be strong against the Russians, who she did call a bully, right. but yet sort of said that she'd work with them like yeah. she worked with them to have a nuclear agreement. So she was all over the map, no clarity about what America's role is. Sanders basically said the Russian people would bring their troops back, which was the most inane, asinine thing I've ever heard anybody say. He thinks some, I guess he honeymooned in the Soviet Union, so he must think that somehow it's a democracy because the Russian people somehow have influence on their own government. Uh, Chafee was completely incomprehensible on foreign policy. It was just, there was no vision at all. They were basically all appeared to be more of the same of the current Obama uh, apathy of policy. Listen to people who have vision. Listen to Dr. Jasser. His website, AIFdemocracy.org, American Islamic Forum for Democracy. Dr. Jasser, thank you for your time. Thank you for your brain. Thanks, Seth. I really appreciate it. Talk Anytime. to you soon.